This is a Vortex 1-6 low-powered variable optic. It has excellent glass, a daylight bright center reticle, weighs around 22 ounces, and comes with Vortex's lifetime warranty. This is also a Vortex 1-6 low-powered variable optic with excellent glass, a daylight bright center reticle, it weighs around 22 ounces, and it also comes with Vortex's lifetime warranty. So how do they differ? Well, other than color, this Razer Gen 2E MSRP is for $1,999 with a street price of around $1,100 if you're lucky enough to find one for that. Whereas this PST Gen 2 MSRP is for $899 with a street price of around $500 that was not too difficult to find until recently when everybody started panic buying everything. So why is this? Why does this Razer cost over twice what this PST costs? That's what I'm going to discuss today. After looking through these scopes more than I'd care to admit over the past few weeks, I'm going to share my objective conclusions about how they compare in the real world and share which one I've decided to stay because one of these is going to get sold. And I think the conclusion might surprise you a little bit. So let's start with weight. This Razer Gen 2E is the lighter of the two scopes on the table. It comes in at just under 22 ounces. The PST comes in at just under 23 ounces. On my scale, there's exactly an ounce difference between the two. So based on this comparison, we have to give the advantage to the Razer E. Note, however, that the E is a Lighten model that is a pretty new development. If you happen to find a secondhand Razer that is not an E model on the market, note that that weighs around 25 ounces, or two ounces more than this PST. So depending on which version of the Razer you are actually shopping for, the PST might well have a weight advantage. If not, to save that one ounce, you are looking at roughly twice the price. Throughout this video, I'm going to show footage of the sight picture through these two scopes in various situations. So right off the bat, I'm going to compare it where it's due. The biggest perk of the Razer compared to really any other low power variable optic is this scope's ability to make its housing, its bezel, seemingly disappear when you're looking through it. It's really quite amazing, especially in photos or videos. It looks like the sight picture through the scope is kind of floating in space. You can, you can see the bezel there, but it's super thin, it's fuzzy, it's like it disappears. Whereas with most scopes, like this PST, you take for granted, but it does relatively look like you're looking through a scope compared to the razor. You kind of get a little bit of that shadowing and it looks like you're looking a bit through a toilet paper tube. This razor, I don't know how they did it, but it is a very cool feature. With that said, after using them in person for the past few weeks, I would say it is a much less noticeable perk to the naked eye. Vortex says that the eye relief on the razor 1 to 6 is 4 inches. This compares to 3.8 inches for the PST, meaning to get that optimum sight picture, the PST has to be a little bit closer to your eye. I think this plays into why the razor uh, manages to disappear from your view as you're looking at it, so it can be a little bit further from your face so the scope is actually taking up less of your vision. One of the biggest perks of the razor, one of the things people quote about it the most, is its very wide field of view. So this is all from Vortex's website. The razor's field of view quoted at one power is 115.2 feet, whereas the PST's is 112.5 feet. When you crank it up to six power, the Razor's field of view is 20.5 feet, and the PST's is 18.8 feet. Now what this means, in theory, is when you are looking through these two scopes, from the same vantage point, at the same object, at the same magnification setting, you should be able to see a little more edge to edge through this razor than you do through this PST. That's in theory. Now, I tried this uh, more than I'm proud to admit. I put both of the scopes on a level surface. I made sure they were aimed at the exact same point standing like this an inch or two apart. And I tried to see if in any scenario I could make out something 
at the very edge of the razor sight picture, identify something that I wasn't able to identify at the edge with the PST. That's what you would think. I honestly could not make that happen. Whatever I could see with the razor at any magnification range, I could see with the PST. The Razer 1 to 6 is widely regarded as having pretty much the closest 1x magnification setting to true 1x out of any low powered variable optic, at least in my research. I would argue though, after using them both, after uh, binge watching The Sopranos using both, the PST, in my subjective opinion, has a truer 1x than the Razer. The Razer looks really good. You see a lot, but it's almost like it's not even 1x. It's almost like it's 0.9x. Uh, you can see how the TV in the Razer shot looks smaller through the scope than around the scope. Whereas with the PST, it looks more like a true uh, 1x. So as far as that goes, I would say the PST gets the advantage, and that's just my subjective opinion, but there's definitely not a true 1X advantage um, for the premium you pay with the Razer. Moving on to glass clarity, and this is where the PST really surprised me in a pleasant way. So Vortex has three tiers, uh, price tiers, quality tiers, when it comes to their tactical optics. The lowest end are the Strike Eagles, PSTs are in the middle, and the top shelf products are these razors. That's why they have this cool metallic bronze color. So there is a substantial price increase from tier to tier, and one would assume, quite reasonably, that there would be a substantial glass uh, quality increase as well. Going back and forth, there were times when I would catch myself looking through the PST think, wow, that looks really great. I can see why the Razer costs so much more. I would pull my head back and then remember that I'm looking through the PST and not the Razer. In my opinion, that's how close they are in terms of glass clarity. I had a few friends look through them as well, and I gotta say, everybody that compared the scopes side by side was hard pressed to tell a difference in glass clarity. I did try to be scientific about it as well. What I did is I took a standard seeing eye chart like you would uh, get at the eye doctors. I put it on a board at 50 yards. I cranked both scopes up to 6X to full magnification and I captured a sight picture aiming at the seeing eye test. I'm gonna splice that in here. You can be the judge for yourself uh, whether the PST needs a stronger prescription than the Razor. I don't believe it does. Uh, I could make out the same digits and then I could not make out the same digits between both of them. So this is not to slam the Razer. This scope has fantastic glass. There's a reason everybody raves about its glass as being one of the standards in the low power variable optic world. What it is instead is extremely high praise for the PST. To me, in terms of glass clarity, if the Razer is the benchmark with the PST, you're getting $1,000 glass clarity for $500. I also did some testing in dim light about a half hour after sunset here, as well as uh, full dark the other night, 4th of July, with fireworks going off. light transmission of the PST, it might be just a little bit worse than the Razer, maybe 5% if that. Um, I guess I would say things seem to pop a little bit better through the Razer in dim light, but it's very difficult to notice. Again, it's one of those things that you wonder for that marginal increase, just how much is that worth? Uh, at the same time, dim light was an excellent time to discuss illumination. So they both have illumination knobs on the left-hand side. The PST has 10 illumination settings with no locking feature. It also has an off setting in between each. 
Razer has 11 illumination settings, again with an offsetting in between each, and the Razer has a locking turret. So that's nice, uh, you pull out to change illumination, you push in the locket. This is tactile and stiff enough on the PST that it's really not a huge selling point to me. I doubt this is gonna come on when you don't want it to, um, just my opinion. One thing that really surprised me, uh, comparing the illumination, I'm gonna splice in the footage here, going up through the illumination settings in a dark environment. And what you see when you start getting to the higher illumination settings with the razor is noticeable bleed. When you're on full brightness in a dark setting, it pretty much looks like a red laser beam shooting from that center dot up into the top of the scope. Um, this is a refurbished unit, but I looked at footage of others to confirm that it's not just mine. I have seen it in other razors. The PST, on the other hand, even in a dim setting, you can go all the way to the highest magnification, or I'm sorry, all the way to the highest illumination setting, um, and it's gonna bloom somewhat. You're gonna get some flare because it's, you know, like the sun glowing in the middle of a dark, uh, objective, but it doesn't spill out into the reticle. In the footage, you'll notice it reflecting off the bottom of the housing somewhat. That's definitely more noticeable in the footage than in real life. In real life, you just get a very bright center dot that doesn't bleed into the reticle. So based on reticle illumination alone and nothing else, comparing the two, I would say the PST seems like the more premium optic. One consideration that I can't attest to is the question of durability and battle readiness. People worry about how the scope they choose is going to hold up under rugged use. I know that there are a few photos floating around out there of high speed low drag guys in the sandbox running these characteristic bronze Razor 1-6s on their personal rifles. That is definitely a selling point. It's a cool look. You show up with one of these at the range. Somebody knows that A, you have money. B, not as certainly you might have good taste. The only thing I can say along the same lines for the PST, there is an article floating around. It's on defensereview.com. I am gonna to link to it in the description here. Uh, the article is by a door kicker. I don't know if he was uh, active duty when he wrote it. In any case, he claims that he and his buddies did run this PST 1-6 overseas. Uh, the reason they didn't spring for a razor is the same reason a lot of us civilians don't, and it's the extra price point. So some door kickers did run these in Afghanistan, I assume, and according to the author, they hold up just fine. So take that for what it's worth. If you absolutely, positively have to look like an operator, you know you gotta get the Razor if only because of this distinctive color. For the rest of us, this PST is probably gonna be rugged enough. So which of these two scopes is staying in my collection? It might not be a surprise after everything I just said, but it's actually going to be the PST 1-6. The reason for this is I live my life an 80-20 rule at a time. Nothing else matters, not the mortgage, not the store, not my team and all their bullshit. In this case, I wouldn't call it an 80-20 rule as much as a 90-50 rule. I feel like the PST 1-6 offers 90% or more performance of the Razer 1-6 for 50% of the cost. That's a value proposition that I personally can't pass up. If you are a Razer owner, or after watching this, you come away and still want to Razer more, more power to you. It is a fantastic optic. There's really nothing to dislike. And the fact that Vortex was able to offer performance so similar to the Razer at this price point is something that I personally am thankful for. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. That's all I have on these two. Stay tuned. Should have more footage coming from the range now that things are hopefully opening up for good. Uh, take care, stay safe. See you next time.